Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SwahiliPod101.com. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mbona usikuje kwa nyumba yangu wakati mwingine hivi karibuni? Asante. Lakini nahisi kuogopa kidogo. Ningelipenda kujua familia yako kabla sijakutana nao. Sawa. Babangu ni mfanyikazi wa ofisi na kozi yake ni kuvua. Mamangu ni mkazi wa nyumba na anajua kupika. Una ndugu au dada wowote? Ndio, nina dada mkubwa na ndugu mdogo. Dadangu ameoleka na anaishi Ulaya. Ndugu yangu ni mwanafunzi katika shule ya upili. Una familia nzuri. Ningelipenda kukutana na kuongea nao. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mbona usikuje kwa nyumba yangu wakati mwingine hivi karibuni? Asante. Lakini nahisi kuogopa kidogo. Ningelipenda kujua familia yako kabla sijakutana nao. Sawa. Babangu ni mfanyikazi wa ofisi. Na kozi yake ni kuvua. Mamangu ni mkazi wa nyumba na anajua kupika. Una ndugu au dada wowote? Ndio, nina dada mkubwa na ndugu mdogo. Dadangu ameoleka na anaishi Ulaya. Ndugu yangu ni mwanafunzi katika shule ya upili. Una familia nzuri. Ningelipenda kukutana na kuongea nao. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what's the matter? After watching this video, you'll be able to make complaints and ask someone else if they're having any issues. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making Complaints PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi inajoto. Once more with the English translation. Kila kitu kisawa. What's the matter? Ofisi inajoto. The office is hot. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What's the matter? That's... Kila kitu kisawa. Listen to it again. Kila kitu kisawa. Kila kitu kisawa. This Swahili sentence literally translates into, Is everything okay? But it means, What's the matter in English? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is, Ofisi ina. Adjective, the office is adjective. For example, the office is hot. Ofisi ina joto. Ofisi ina joto. Here are a few more examples you can use with the same pattern to make complaints. Hot. Joto. Joto. Cold. Baridi. 
Baridi. Noisy. Kelele. Kelele. Dirty. Uchafu. Uchafu. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi inabaridi. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi inakelele. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina uchafu. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what's the matter? Kila kitu kisawa. Imagine the office is cold. Do you remember how to say cold? Baridi. Baridi. Say, the office is cold. Ofisi ina baridi. Now answer the question saying the office is cold. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina baridi. Now imagine the office is noisy. Do you remember how to say noisy? Kelele. Kelele. Say, the office is noisy. Ofisi ina kelele. Now, answer the question saying the office is noisy. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina kelele. Now imagine the office is dirty. Do you remember how to say dirty? Uchafu. Uchafu. Say, the office is dirty. Ofisi ina uchafu. Now answer the question, saying the office is dirty. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina uchafu. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to make complaints. You are now able to share your concerns like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Make any complaints you may have today. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Today, we are going to look at the top 25 phrases in Swahili. Let's have fun. Jambo. Hello. Okay, the first phrase is Jambo. Hello. Jambo. Jambo is one of the most simple greetings in Kenya. Anyone can use it at any time. In fact, we love using it with tourists. Please visit Kenya and just say Jambo. Habariza asubui. Good morning. Okay, the next phrase is Habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza asubui. We often wake up tired sometimes in the morning, but it doesn't cost to say Habariza asubui. Good morning. 
Habari za mchana. Good afternoon. The next phrase is Habari za mchana. Good afternoon. Habari za mchana. You know, in the afternoon when you meet someone, you're like, oh, habari za mchana. Habari means news. So you're trying to ask someone, okay, how is your afternoon? Tell me anything that is happening in your afternoon. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Yes, it's time to sleep. I th sometimes look forward to that time. And, you know, I, I, I look forward to saying good night to my friends or to my family or to my whatever person who is there. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? It's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Mimi naitwa. I'm Mimi naitwa Medina. My name is Medina. Mimi naitwa Medina. Now, this is actually an answer to the previous question. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Now, you have to keep this in mind that, you know, if you use this word frequently, you'll be able to tell people about your name. You'll be able to tell people your name. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. I mean, it's really polite. I always feel like energized when someone says, nice to meet you. <laughs> it can be awkward when someone says, oh, I do not want to meet you, you know. <laughs> but we rarely hear that. Just use that word, nice to meet you. Habarigani. How are you? Habarigani. How are you? Habari in Swahili means news. And gani means what? So what news? Actually, what you're trying to ask here is like, what, what do you have? I mean, what is all about your life right now in a polite way, you know? Then someone will say, Mzuri, or it's okay. They will not go on telling you whatever is happening all around, but, you know, they'll just say it's fine or not good, you know? So it's an important phrase. Niko salama, asante, nawewe. I am fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante. Fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante means, oh, I'm fine. Literally, that is what it means. I'm fine, thank you. Then you... You take it back. What about you? You are concerned about the person who is asking you, you know. If you just say, oh, I'm fine, thanks, then you keep quiet, you know. I mean, we do that sometimes, but, you know, sometimes you want to show concern. So you ask, Nawewe, and you? Tafadhali, please. Tafadhali, please. It's a magic word all around the world. So tafadhali is one of those words that you want to embrace when you visit Kenya. Tafadhali, whenever you're asking a favor, just say, Tafadhali, excuse me, Tafadhali, Tafadhali. That's one great word you need to remember. Asante, thank you. Asante, thank you. It's also one of the magic words that relates to Tafadhali, please. You know, Asante is like you're appreciating whatever favor you received from someone who did you a favor. So it's also one of those words you, you like to embrace whenever and wherever. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu. Karibu is one of the most common words used in Kenya. For example, when someone knocks your door, you'll say, oh, karibu. That means come in or welcome, actually. Then in some circumstance where someone gives you something, you'll say thank you, right? Now, the person who is giving you will say karibu. Karibu means welcome. So <laughs> it can be a joke, but you know what? You can go and ask them, or you can go and ask as many favors as, as you can because they said karibu. I mean, that's a joke. <laughs> you don't have to take it seriously, though. <laughs> Dio. Yes. Dio. Yes. Dio. Dio is a response. Whenever someone asks a question, you can say Dio if it's a positive answer, I mean, to the question. I mean, it, it depends. You know, there are the yes, no questions. Yeah, that is where it lies. 
Ndio. Umefika Kenya? Ndio. Umekula chakula? Ndio. Umefika Kenya means have you arrived in Kenya? You'll say yes, which is ndio. Have you eaten food? Umekula chakula? You'll say ndio. Yes. Hapana. No. Hapana. No. Hapana. Hapana is an answer to the yes no question. Just like ndio. Ndio means yes as we looked at it previously. Now here it's no. Umefika Kenya? Hapana. Have you arrived in Kenya? No. Umekula chakula? Have you eaten food? No. Hapana. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Sawa is used to acknowledge that you agree to whatever has been said. For example, you can say, Sawa, nimeelewa maelezo yako. Okay, I've understood the explanation. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. This is a very handy word, especially when you want someone to excuse you for something. Niwie radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako? Excuse me, can I check your bag? Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. Samahani is also one of those polite words that you really need to remember. It comes handy when you make a mistake. Samahani, nimechelewa. I'm very sorry that I'm late. Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. Of course, you'll want to know time. If you cannot see see the time, probably there's no wall clock around, or perhaps your phone is off the check, or perhaps you forgot your wristwatch. You'll ask your friend, Nisangapi. Msala niwapi. Where is the restroom? Msalani niwapi. Where is the restroom? Msalani niwapi. Now, for real, you may need this word really, especially if nature keeps calling on you, you know? You may want to ask, hey, tafadali, msalani niwapi. Excuse me, where is the restroom? Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. When you're caught up doing something and someone asks for a favor, you may use this word. Just a moment. Subiri kidogo. Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahi ni nini. Now, he there stands for the thing that you want to buy. For example, you can say, Beyahi nguo ni nini. How much is this dress? Saidia, help. Saidia, help. Saidia. Saidia! Imagine you're drowning. What will you do? You'll shout, Saidia! Help! When you're in trouble, I mean, this word comes in handy. I think you may want to use it. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. After you meet with your friend, you have a chat with her or him, you'll definitely say, Bye! See you later! When you're padding. I think it's also in one of those polite words that you may want to add to your list. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Now, Kwaheri reminds me of those toughest moments in my life. You know, when I went abroad to study and my family was back um, in my country, the toughest moments was when we were parting. You know, I will never want to say Kwaheri. I will never want to say goodbye. I will never even want to utter it out, but I will just say it with tears rolling down my, my cheeks. Yeah, Kwaheri, it's a good word to use whenever you're padding. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui. This is a word that you'll, you, you'll use when you acknowledge that for sure you're not sure about the answer to the question or to the situation that is happening at the moment. 
Some people think it's impolite to say isijui, especially when you're asking for directions. They'll try to give you information which might be wrong to show that they are polite. So you got to be careful. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, do not forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com. Kwaheri, see you again. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwalimu na mwanafunzi wanaongea. Nilini mwanafunzi ataenda kwa ofisi ya mwalimu? Sikuelewa kamwe kila kitu katika darasa ya leo. Hakika, je, una maswali yeyote? Ndiyo, nina mengi kabisa. Je, una muda sasa? Nina shughuli kidogo sasa. Tafadhali, njoo kwa ofisi yangu mchana. Nitakuwepo kuanzia saa saba hadi saa kumi. Sawa, nitakuwa pale saa nne mchana. Nilini mwanafunzi ataenda kwa ofisi ya mwalimu? Mwalimu na mwanafunzi wanaongea. Nilini mwanafunzi ataenda kwa ofisi ya mwalimu? Sikuelewa kamwe kila kitu katika darasa ya leo. Hakika, je, una maswali yeyote? Ndiyo, nina mengi kabisa. Je, Una muda sasa? Nina shughuli kidogo sasa. Tafadhali, njoo kwa ofisi yangu mchana. Nitakuwepo kuanzia saa saba hadi saa kumi. Sawa. Nitakuwa pale saa nne mchana. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Repeat after the speaker when you hear the beep. Mama. Mama. Mother. Mama. 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 Baba. Baba. Father. Baba. 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 Dada mdogo. Dada mdogo. Younger sister. Dada mdogo. Dada mdogo. Dada mdogo. Dada mkubwa. Dada mkubwa. Older sister. Dada mkubwa. Dada mkubwa. Dada mkubwa. Ndugu mkubwa. Ndugu mkubwa. Older brother. 
ndugu mkubwa ndugu mkubwa ndugu mkubwa ndugu mdogo ndugu mdogo younger brother ndugu mdogo ndugu mdogo ndugu mdogo nyanya nyanya grandmother nyanya 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 babu babu grandfather babu 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 shangazi shangazi ant shangazi 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 mjomba mjomba uncle mjomba 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 binamu binamu cousin binamu 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 mume mume husband mume 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 mke mke wife mke 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 mwana wa kiume mwana wa kiume son mwana wa kiume mwana wa kiume mwana wa kiume mwana wa kike mwana wa kike daughter mwana wa kike mwana wa kike mwana wa kike Trying to learn Swahili? Learn lightning fast with the Innovative Language 101 app. Download it now for free for the iPhone, iPad, or any Android device.
and start speaking in minutes with this powerful language learning tool. What makes it so special? Get instant access to hundreds of fun and effective audio and video lessons. Enjoy learning with real lessons from real teachers. Master reading and grammar with comprehensive lesson notes. Perfect your pronunciation with line-by-line -line audio. Wow native Swahili speakers with cultural insights. Learn offline by downloading lessons to any device. Stay motivated as you watch your Swahili grow on your progress tracking dashboard. Stay up to date with instant notification of new lessons. Take lessons that are right for you, whether you're just getting started or already an advanced learner. Discover for yourself why millions of Innovative Language 101 app users are learning lightning fast. Download the Innovative Language 101 app for free right now. Pick your language. Sign up for a free lifetime account and start speaking from the very first lesson. Already a member? Simply download the Innovative Language 101 app for free. Pick your language and log in. Pick up your progress as the app knows where you left off. Getting on the fast track to fluency is that simple. The Innovative Language 101 app. Instant access to fun and effective Swahili lessons anywhere, anytime. It's Medina again on another lesson. This time we're going to look at the 20 words you will need for the beach. Everyone who comes to Kenya tries to come to the beach, I promise you. And you'll need this for the beach. Okay, let's get going. Miwani Ajua. Sunglasses. This really doesn't look like Miwani, but it's just an illustration. Miwani Ajua. He Miwani Ajua ni pesangapi. How much are these sunglasses? Ufuo wa bahari, beach. Kunya tutembe, kwenye ufuo wa bahari. Come, let us walk on the beach. Kuogelea, swimming. Easy. I don't know how to do it, but you know how to do it. Kuogelea ni moja wapo ya hobi zangu. Swimming is one of my hobbies. Jua. The sun. Leo, jua hii ni kali sana. Jua hii ni kali sana. Today, the sun is too hot. Ooh. Where do I go? Okay, the weather in Kenya and the seasons vary a lot with temperatures ranging from around, it can go from 15 to 30 degrees. 30 degrees is way, way hot, so you may need to Get something to protect yourself. Mti wa mtende. Palm tree. Hu mti wa mtende unakivuli mzuri sana. This palm tree has very good shade. You can enjoy it. Okay, actually in Kenya it's not that. In the coastal areas it's humid. But in some other places the shade under a tree when it's hot is the most amazing thing. Very relaxing thing to do. I know you can enjoy that. Get some of those trees around and just relax under them when the sun is shining hot. Koala bahari, seashell. Napenda kuokota koaza bahari. I like collecting seashells. It can be a hobby. Try it out when you're at the coast of Kenya. Vazi la kuoga, swimsuit. Usisahau. Vazi la kuoga. Don't forget your swimsuit, please. To have fun, make sure you carry it with you. Bahari, ocean. He bahari ni maridadi sana leo. This ocean is very beautiful today. You like the view of the ocean in Mombasa when the sun is shining hot. It's so beautiful. You want to stay there. Forever. The scenery is bed taking and I bet you like it. Piki Piki la Majini. Jet ski. <laughs> Naogopa kuendesha Piki Piki la Majini. I fear riding on a jet ski. Literally, I do fear. Even if you go a number of people in the sea, I just don't want to try it out. Taweli ya Pwani. Beach towel. Nipe hiyo taweli yangu ya pwani tafadhali. Hand me my beach towel, please. Kiti cha pwani. Beach chair. Ameenda 
kupumzika katika kiti cha pwani. He has gone to rest on the beach chair. There are quite many beach chairs at the beach and I think you can grab one for yourself to relax. Hope you do. Boma la mchanga. Sand castle. Eneo hili lina boma la mchanga. Moja tu. This area has only one sand castle. I remember in my childhood, one thing that took us, besides swimming or having fun at the sea, one thing that, one other thing that took us to the sea was making sand castles. It was lots of fun. Kirimba, kula. Ninduka gani liko na kirimba hapa? Which shop has a kula around here? Mawimbi, tide. Napenda kuangalia mawimbi. I like watching tides a lot, like, for real, it's very relaxing. Rangi shaba, tan. Kuota jua kuna kupa rangi shaba. Basking in the sun gives you a tan. You got that experience? When I go with something on the sea and I come back with my hands tanned. Ogelea kwa chombo cha kupumulia. Snorkeling. Tuende kuogelea kwa chombo cha kupumulia. Let's go snorkeling. Snorkeling looks fun. I've never tried it before, but um, I think it looks fun. My friends tell me it looks fun. Maybe I should try it out. Party party, flip flop. Tafadhali va party party. Please, wear your flip flops. Party party comes from the mimicking sound of the sandals when you're walking. Party party. So it's easy to remember. Mafuta ya kukinga kwa jua. Sunscreen. Nisaidia na mafuta ya kukinga kwa jua. Yangu ya meisha. Help me with your sunscreen. Mine is finished. Suti la kuogelea la bikini. Bikini. Suti la kuogelea la bikini langu limeraruka. My bikini is torn. Oh, I'm worried. I need to get another one. Kifa cha kuelea. Flora. Nunulia mtoto kifa cha kuelea. Buy a flora for the baby. Today we looked at the 20 words you'll need for the beach. I am sure they'll be very helpful uh, during your visit to, to, to Kenya or any other places that has Swahili speakers. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also, if possible, visit us at SwahiliPod101.com for more exciting lessons. Bye-bye. I'm going for lunch. <laughs>
stick around and review what you learned in the previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access small example sentences, create your own flashcard desk, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is checker, laugh, checker, checker, laugh. Wachumba walichekelea picha. The couple laughed at the picture. Wachumba walichekelea picha. Nitam. Delicious. Nitam. Nitamu. Delicious. Chakula hiki ni kitam. This food is delicious. Chakula hiki ni kitam. Maji. Water. Maji. Maji. Water. Waweza kunipa maji tafazari? Can I have some water, please? Waweza kunipa maji tafadhali? Chai. Tea. Chai. Chai. Tea. Mwanamke huyu anakunywa chai. The woman is drinking tea. Mwanamke huyu anakunywa chai. Kahawa. Coffee. Kahawa. Kahawa. Coffee. Bilika la kahawa limeja kahawa. The coffee pot is full of coffee. Bilika la kahawa limejaha kahawa. Pombe. Beer. Pombe. Pombe. Beer. Chupa ya pombe. Bottle of beer. Chupa ya pombe. Mvinyo. Wine. Mvinyo. Mvinyo. Wine. Mvinyo unamwaga kwa bila uri. Wine is being poured into the glass. Mvinyo unamwaga kwa bila uri. Nyama ya ngombe. Beef. Nyama ya ngombe. Nyama ya ngombe. Beef. Chagua la leo usiku ni nyama ya ngombe au kuku. Tonight's choices are beef or chicken. Chagua la leo usiku ni nyama ya ngombe au kuku. Nyama ya kuku. Chicken. Nyama ya kuku. Nyama ya kuku. Chicken. Sipendi ngozi ya kuku. I don't like chicken skin. Sipendi ngozi ya kuku. Nyama ya ngurue. Pork. Nyama ya ngurue. Nyama 
ya nguruwe pok nyama ya nguruwe ni nyama inayopatikana kutoka kwa nguruwe pok is the meat from a pig nyama ya nguruwe ni nyama inayopatikana kutoka kwa nguruwe samaki fish samaki samaki fish wajapani hula samaki kwa wingi japanese people eat a lot of fish wajapani hula samaki kwa wingi nyama ya mbuzi lamb nyama ya mbuzi nyama ya mbuzi lamb egemeo ya nyama ya mbuzi rack of lamb egemeo ya nyama ya mbuzi daktari doctor daktari dakitari doctor daktari anapima papio la mgonjwa the doctor is taking the patient's pass dakitari anapima papio la mgonjwa afisa polisi police officer Afisa polisi Afisa polisi Police officer Kazi ya afisa polisi ni kulinda na kuhudumia umma The job of a police officer is to protect and save the public Kazi ya afisa polisi ni kulinda na kuhudumia umma Mwalimu teacher Mwalimu Mwalimu teacher Mwalimu anafunza wanafunzi darasani The teacher is teaching the kids in the classroom Mwalimu anafunza wanafunzi darasani mfanyakazi employee mfanyakazi mfanyakazi employee malupulupu ya mfanyakazi employee benefits marupurupu ya mfanya kazi jo kam jo jo o kam jo hapa kam here jo o hapa kuona si kuona kuona si hawezi ona chochote bila miani yake she cannot see anything without her glasses hawezi ona chochote bila miwani yake tengeneza make Tengeneza. Tengeneza. Make. Mpishi hutengeneza kinywaji cha machungwa. The chef makes orange juice. Mpishi hutengeneza kinywaji cha machungwa. Kutumia use kutumia 
kutumia use tumia kamera ya tarakilishi use a webcam tumia kamera ya tarakilishi well done in this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilpod101.com to get access to full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversation you also get example sentences custom flashcard decks and more learning resources see you next time kwaheri In this lesson, you will learn new vocabulary to increase your language skills. After learning the new words, you will be challenged with a quiz to review them. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. One shilling. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Five shillings. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Ten shillings. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Twenty shillings. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. 50 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. 100 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. 200 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. 500 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. One thousand shillings note. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. 
noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi tano. Shilingi moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mume na mkeo wanatazama rasimu ya sakafu. Wanaenda kuona nyumba ipi? Na hili je, lina sebule nzuri na kubwa. Hmm, napenda sebule kubwa, lakini pia nataka nafasi ya kuegesha gari. Na tuone. Na hili je. Ndio. Hilo ni nzuri. Tuwaweza kwenda kuiona. Ngoja kidogo. Kabati lake si ni ndogo sana. Jambo njema. Hmm. Panaonekana hamna lile lililo timilifu. Ngoja, na hili je? Lina kila tunalohitaji, sivyo? Na kabati lake pia ni kubwa mno. Twende tukalitazame. Sawa. Wanaenda kuona nyumba ipi? Mume na mkeo wanatazama rasimu ya sakafu. Wanaenda kuona nyumba ipi? Na hili je, lina sebule nzuri na kubwa. Hmm, napenda sebule kubwa, lakini pia nataka nafasi ya kuegesha gari. Na tuone. Na hili je. Ndio. Hilo ni nzuri. Tuwaweza kwenda kuiona. Ngoja kidogo. 
Kabati lake si ni ndogo sana. Jambo njema. Hmm. Panaonekana hamna lile lililo timilifu. Ngoja, na hili je? Lina kila tunalohitaji, sivyo? Na kabati lake pia ni kubwa mno. Twende tukalitazame. Sawa. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Yeah, hello everyone. It's Medina here with you on Swahili Top Words. Today we're going to look at 10 must know autumn vocabulary. Autumn? Autumn. I, I don't know. That pronunciation is quite tricky, but whatever it is, autumn vocabulary. Yes, welcome and have fun. Fulana. Fulana. Sweater. Fulana. Sweater. Huwezi toka inje bila fulana. Huwezi toka nje bila fulana. You cannot go outdoors without a sweater. Yeah, that's a common voice from our mothers or perhaps your older brother, older sister, whoever it is. But when it is super cold, you don't want to get out without a sweater because you don't want to catch cold. You know, you know what it means catching a cold in that cold season? Please get yourself a sweater when it's autumn. Kuwa na mvua. Kuwa na mvua. Rainy. Kuwa na mvua. Rainy. Leo ni siku ya kuwa na mvua. Today is a rainy day. Oh, yeah, today is a rainy day. We love rain, but not always, especially when, you're, when you want to go for a picnic. But you know what? Get yourself an umbrella. Or if you want to fill the... The test of rain, hmm, just go out. You know, actually, during my childhood memories, we'll never mind about rain. <laughs> In fact, it was our favorite thing. Of course, not for the very heavy rain. That one, you might get sick. But when it rains, we'll jump outside and we're like, yeah, it's raining. We shout to the rain as if it has ears to listen. And you know what? Out there, the smell of soil was so good. I miss those days because everywhere where I am, it's stomach. You can't feel the taste, the natural taste. Anyway, wherever you are, take care. Take care. Get your umbrella whenever you're going outside. Kuwa na upepo. Kuwa na upepo. Windy. Kuwa na upepo. Windy. Hali ya anga leo ni kuwa na upepo. Hali ya anga leo ni kuwa na upepo. Today's weather is windy. <gasps> you know what? I think I got a practical definition of windy when I came to Japan. I'm currently living in Japan and, and there's what we call typhoon. I never even knew about it <laughs> when I was young. I mean, it's, it's quite hilarious, but it's the truth. Typhoon almost carried me away. I was like, what kind of wind is this? I mean, that was windy for me. Of course, we have, it's windy in Kenya, and sometimes it can be really terrible. It carries away rooftops and all that. But, you know, it's, it's not so much like a typhoon. Probably now we can differentiate between what windy is and typhoon is. Hmm. Do you get the difference? I don't know. Try and figure it out by yourself. Kuna baridi. Kuna baridi. Cool. Kuna baridi. Cool. Kama kuna baridi, uoge na majimoto. Kama kuna baridi, uoge na majimoto. When it is cool, you should shower with hot water. I mean, that was so like serious to think of, of, of showering with hot water when it's cool. I remember in my boarding school, it was in a forested area and it was always cold. But guess what? We will shower with Cold water, super cold, almost like ice. And you will not like it. But you know what? You get out of there shivering. But when you get in class, you're very alert. So it depends on you what you do. But you know what? Take care of your health in whichever case. Demani. Demani. Autumn. Demani. Autumn. Demani he nitanunua kifacha joto. Demani he. Nitanunua 
kifaa cha joto. This autumn, I will buy a heater. Yes, you can, but not necessarily in Kenya. It's way different. If you get a heater, imagine you'll be wasting money, you know. Save it, because in Kenya, the weathers are, are really good, consistent throughout the year. It's never that super cold, like the winter cold in Japan or, or other places, you know. We don't, we don't get to see snow. I mean, once in a while, a miracle happens, you know. That's what I mean. But you don't have to buy a heater. You can heat your house in a different way. I mean, yeah, but really not a heater. That would be too much. Yeah, for real, you, you really don't have to buy a heater. It's not that cold for a heater. You can find different other means of heating your house, but not necessarily with a heater. Save that money, yo! Halloween. 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 The Day of Monsters, Halloween. It's just Halloween in Swahili. We don't have any, we haven't come up with a better Swahili word. Probably Swahili words cannot just fit that word, you know? I'm not sure, but uh, mm, probably. Halloween, Halloween. Halloween linakuja jumalijalo. Halloween linakuja jumalijalo. Halloween is coming up next week. Yeah, a day of monsters and ghosts. I'm freaking out already because I just don't like those things. Anyway, Halloween. Halloween is, is being introduced in Kenya and people are adopting it slowly by slowly, but it's, it's not so famous and people are not really, really into it as I see it here. Hmm, yeah, because, you know, I, I think just as 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 me or as i am or whichever way you want to put it kenyans really are not into ghosts and how and and blood shedding and all that it's kind of freaking right don't you think so anyway upon you anyone who wants to celebrate halloween can call their friends and they have halloween party or something but it's not so commercial in as much as people are now adopting it so we have what we call anniversaries you know anniversaries whereby you pay respect for the living dead or for your ancestors. And during this time, especially if it was a recent death, after a year, people come together, like families and relatives, you come together and you celebrate this person. It's a celebration actually, because there's a lot of eating, a lot of praying, a lot of dancing. Dancing? Yeah, there's a lot of dancing and music. And in some places, yes, there is just to come together and, and celebrate the living dead or perhaps your ancestors. Some people do this annually. Some people do not do it. So it depends with your family and your culture. Mboza. Mboza. Chestnut. Mboza. Chestnut. Ile pale dio mboza. Ile pale dio mboza. There is the chestnut. Chestnuts are not quite common in Kenya. Shati la mikono mirefu. Shati la mikono mirefu. Long sleeved shirt. Shati la mikono mirefu. Long sleeved shirt. Duka gani linauza shati la mikono mirefu? Duka gani linauza shati la mikono mirefu? Which shop sells long sleeved shirts? I don't remember anything about long sleeve shirt. <laughs> it's just a cloth like any other, right? Especially in Kenya, fashion cuts across any weather. We put on long sleeve shirt when it's super hot. We put on long sleeve shirt when it's cold. I mean, long sleeve shirt, especially when you're going to work, it's kind of one of the official wear. So it cuts across every weather and season. Yeah, you can carry one or two or seven to Kenya while you're there. It suits any season. Of course, you also want to be casual, right? When you're going to safari parks or whatever, I think you want you don't want to look really official, you know? I mean, it's it's your choice, but um, casual wear will also do. Matawi yanayo anguka. Matawi yanayo anguka. Falling leaves. Matawi yanayo anguka. Falling leaves. The money nimsimu unausishwa na matawi yanayo anguka. The money. Nimsimu unao husishwa na matawi 
yanayoanguka. Autumn is the season associated with falling leaves. Yeah, we have, actually in Kenya, we have different kinds of trees that shed leaves during the autumn season. And yeah, I remember those experiences. At school, we would pile many sacks of leaves in the name of that. But you know what? We never used to throw them. We had a big compost pit where we would pile them and they will stay there for manure. So every year we didn't buy manure. That was clever of us. But you have something, a manure, organic, to use in our farms. And back in my hometown, of course, I will clean up, you know. Those are some of the seasons that, you know, you'll not like because you'll end up, after you clean up, immediately after two minutes, you see lots of leaves piling again. And again, you have to clean up and clean up and clean up and clean up until the autumn season is over. But you know, just brings back memories, beautiful memories. I miss those days. Jani, Jani, leaf, Jani. Leaf. Actually, this is my hand, but it's not a leaf, but it just gives you an expression of how a leaf looks like. Does it have this? I mean, leaves look differently. Jani, leaf. Majani yanazidi kuanguka. Majani yanazidi kuanguka. Leaves are continuously falling. They are continuously falling. You know, we had this tree. It was so huge. It was right in front of our, of our, I mean, a little bit distance from my our main house. But it was in the compound, of course. And it was really big. And it had very huge leaves. And you know what? During the autumn season, those leaves would continuously fall. And you know what? We had to continuously clean up. Every moment you clean up this side, the other side is already full of leaves, like it was, wow, why? I was always wishing that, oh, let the autumn season pass just because of that. But you know what? I like the flowers around, so hmm. you have this that is good and you have that that is not really good, but it has to happen. So you've got to balance and compromise. Ah, I lived with that. I mean, it brings black childhood memories and I'm loving it. Yeah, things come to an end and we've actually come to the end of this lesson. 10 must know autumn vocabulary. I'm sure when you visit Kenya, you'll carry these vocabularies with you and you feel comfortable, I promise you. Now, you know what? We technically don't have autumn in Kenya. I mean, I mean, season change, but you know, when you get the right definition of autumn, yeah, perhaps it doesn't really match with the seasons, the autumn, the autumn season in Kenya. How about your country? We'd like to know your comments. Please visit us. Um, at swahilipod101.com to learn more Swahili and we would like to hear your comment and don't forget to subscribe to this channel bye How we ask Swahili listening skills. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anaongea na bibi yake katika simu. Anaenda kununua nini? Eti naelekea nyumbani sasa. Sawa. Unaweza kununua kitu kwa njia yako nyumbani? Ndivyo. Ungelipenda ninunue nini? Tunahitaji maziwa na mkate ya kiamsha kinywa ya kesho. Maziwa na mkate nimezipata. Paketi ngapi za maziwa? Moja itatosha. Sawa. Jambo lingine lolote? Sekunde. Wacha niangalie kama tunasiagi. Ndio, tunao. Ndivyo, tuna pombe yoyote iliyobaki? Ndiyo, tunachupa kidogo hapa. Vyema, hatuhitaji kununua yeyote sasa hivi. Sawa sawa, nadhania tuko sawa. Asante. Anaenda kununua nini?
mwanamume anaongea na bibi yake katika simu. Anaenda kununua nini? Eti naelekea nyumbani sasa. Sawa. Unaweza kununua kitu kwa njia yako nyumbani? Ndivyo. Ungelipenda ninunue nini? Tunahitaji maziwa na mkate ya kiamsha kinywa ya kesho. Maziwa na mkate nimezipata. Paketi ngapi za maziwa? Moja itatosha. Sawa. Jambo lingine lolote? Sekunde. Wacha niangalie kama tunasiagi. Ndio, tunao. Ndivyo, tuna pombe yoyote iliyobaki. Ndio. Tunachupa kidogo hapa. Vyema. Hatuhitaji kununua yeyote sasa hivi. Sawa sawa. Nadhania tuko sawa. Asante. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone. I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. Today, we'll learn conversational phrases about occupations. After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about your job and ask what somebody does for a living. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your occupation PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni msani. Listen to it again, now with the English translation. Wewe hufanya nini? What do you do? Mimi ni msani. I'm an artist. First of all, you need to learn how to say, what do you do? That's, wewe hufanya nini? Listen to it again. Wewe hufanya nini? Wewe hufanya nini? Now, how do you answer this question? This is the pattern you'll need. Mimi ni your occupation. I may an your occupation. For example, I'm an artist. Mi mi ni m sa ni. Mimi ni msani. Here are a few more professions you can use with the same pattern. Police officer. Askari. Askari. Teacher. Mwalimu. Mwalimu. Doctor. Daktari. Daktari. Engineer. Mhandisi. Mhandisi. Now, listen to some examples. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni mwalimu. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni daktari. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni mhandisi. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what do you do? Wewe hufanya nini? Imagine you're a doctor. Do you remember how to say doctor? 
Daktari. Daktari. Say, I am a doctor. Mimi ni daktari. Now answer the question saying that you are a doctor. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni daktari. Now, imagine you're a teacher. Do you remember how to say teacher? Mwalimu. Mwalimu. Say, I'm a teacher. Mimi ni mwalimu. Now, answer the question saying that you are a teacher. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni mwalimu. Now, imagine you're an engineer. Do you remember how to say engineer? Mhandisi. Mhandisi. Say, I'm an engineer. Mimi ni mhandisi. Now, answer the question saying that you are an engineer. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni mhandisi. Well done! In this lesson, you learn new occupation-related vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life. You are now able to talk about your job like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell me about your job. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye! How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea kuhusu printer katika afisi. Printer mzee uko wapi? Tuweke wapi printer mpya? Hmm. Nadhani tupaweke palipo printer mzee. Lakini ule mzee bado unafanya kazi. Tutaendelea kutumia. Sawa. Hivyo basi hatuwezi kuweka ule mpya hapo. Ni mbaya sana. Ingekuwa vyema kuwa na printer mpya katika rafu ya vitabu iliyo karibu na mlango. Lakini kuna nafasi ya printer moja pekee. Sawa. Nadhani tuweke katika sehemu ile nyingine ya nyumba. Sawa. Unaonaje ikiwa karibu na dirisha? Ni suluhisho nzuri pia. Printer mzee uko wapi? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea kuhusu printer katika afisi. Printer mzee uko wapi? Tuweke wapi printer mpya? Hmm. Nadhani tupaweke palipo printer mzee. Lakini ule mzee bado unafanya kazi. Tutaendelea kutumia. Sawa. Hivyo basi hatuwezi kuweka ule mpya hapo. Ni mbaya sana. Ingekuwa vyema kuwa na printer mpya katika rafu ya vitabu iliyo karibu na mlango. Lakini kuna nafasi ya printer moja pekee. Sawa. Nadhani tuweke katika sehemu ile nyingine ya nyumba. Sawa. Unaonaje ikiwa karibu na dirisha? Ni suluhisho nzuri pia. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. 
let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101, Swahili Top Words. Today, we are going to look at 10 questions you should know. Welcome and have fun. Jina lako ni nani? Jina lako ni nani? What's your name? To answer that, you'll say, Jina langu ni Medina. If you're Juma, you'll say, Jina langu ni Juma. My name is Juma. Uhali gani? Uhali gani? How are you? To answer that, you'll say, Jema, I'm fine. Or fine? Uhali gani fine? I'm fine. Ulizaliwa wapi? Ulizaliwa wapi? Where are you from? To answer that, I'll give the name of my country. Kenya. Ulizaliwa wapi? Kenya. If you're born in the United States, you'll say, America. Ulizaliwa wapi? America. Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? When is your birthday? To answer that, you'll say, Siku yangu ya kuzaliwa ni Aprili tarehe tatu. My birthday is April 3rd. Unaishi wapi? Unaishi wapi? Where do you live? Ninaishi Nairobi. I live in Nairobi. Nairobi is quite a big place. Actually, it's a province in itself. So you won't say you're living in the whole Nairobi. We have to be specific. So if you live in Langata, you will say Ninaishi Langata. That is when we will assume you're in Nairobi and you're talking within people in Nairobi. They will understand where Langata is. But if you're out of Nairobi, you'll say Naishi Nairobi Langata to just be specific. Unafanya kazi wapi? Unafanya kazi wapi? Where do you work? To answer this, you'll say Jijini Mombasa. Again, Jijini Mombasa. Mombasa is the name of the place. Jijini means town. So if you're working in Kisumu, you'll say Jijini Kisumu, just to be specific. I work in Mombasa. I work in Kisumu. Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Where did you learn Swahili? For that, you can answer by saying, katika swahilipod101.com. From swahilipod101.com. J, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? J, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? Do you like Kenyan food? To answer that, you will say, ndio napenda. Yes, I love it. Yes, I like Kenyan food. In Kenya, we have varieties of food, and I'm sure you'll like it. The most staple food in Kenya is ugali. Ugali. Ugali is like cornbread. It's made from white flour. White corn flour. It's not very hard. Something like rice, but you know, in the flour form, but cooked. You don't eat the flour, it's cooked. So it's cornbread. Now, you eat cornbread with different kinds of stews. You can eat it with a bean stew, beef stew, name any kind of stew. And then we also have vegetables. I'm sure you'll like it. Try it out. Umeshawaikuwa Kenya. Umeshawaikuwa Kenya. Have you been to Kenya? You can answer this by saying, Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. No, it's my first time. This is a very common question to tourists who visit Kenya. So, be prepared. And it will really sound cool if you can answer in Swahili. Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. He unauza pesa ngapi? He unauza pesa ngapi? How much is this? To answer that, you can say, shilingi kumi za Kenya. Kumi is the price. So, you can keep changing that and say, shilingi hamsini za Kenya. 50 shillings, Kenya shillings. This will be a very useful phrase to use when you're going shopping. Of course, I'm sure you're going to buy souvenirs for your family members back in your country. So having this word on your fingertips will be very useful. Yay, we're done! 
thank you so much for keeping up with me until the end of this lesson. Do you remember all those questions? They're very handy and I really recommend that you have them at your fingertips whenever you visit Kenya. Now, if you liked our lesson, do not forget to give us a thumbs up down there and leave your comments. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com for more lesson. See you next time. Kwa heri tuonane. Bye. Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, how's your mother? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about well-being and ask how someone is doing. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Conversation About Family Wellbeing PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Habari ya mama yako. Ako sawa. Once more with the English translation. Habari ya mama yako. How's your mother? Ako sawa. She's fine. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, How's your mother? That's... Habari ya mama yako. Listen to it again. Habari ya mama yako. Habari ya mama yako. Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... Ako. State of well-being. But it translates as, she is state of well-being, in English. For example, she's fine. Ako sawa. Ako sawa. Here are a few expressions related to well-being that you can use with this pattern. Great. Bora. Bora. Fine. Sawa. Sawa. So-so. Kabisa, kabisa. Kabisa, kabisa. Bad. Mbaya, mbaya. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Habari ya mama yako. Ako bora. Habari ya mama yako. Ako kabisa kabisa. Habari ya mama yako. Ako mbaya. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, how's your mother? Habari ya mama yako. Imagine she's great. Do you remember how to say great? Bora. Bora. Say, she's great. Ako bora. Now, answer the question saying she's great. Habari ya mama yako. Ako bora. Now imagine she's so-so. Do you remember how to say so-so? Kabisa, kabisa. 
Kabisa, kabisa. Say, she's so so. Ako, kabisa, kabisa. Now, answer the question saying, she's so so. Habari ya mama yako. Ako, kabisa, kabisa. Now imagine she's bad. Do you remember how to say bad? Mbaya. Mbaya. Say, she's bad. Ako mbaya. Now answer the question saying, she's bad. Habari ya mama yako. Ako mbaya. In this lesson, you learn new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to talk about well-being. You're now able to talk about how someone is feeling like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell me how you are today. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye! In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Beatrice. Welcome to the 800 Core Swahili Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So. After you have read the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in the previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important part of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Naweza ongea na Anna. Hello. Can I speak to Anna? Jumbo. Naweza ongea na Anna. Niwe radhi. Excuse me. Niwe radhi. Niwe radhi. Excuse me. Niwe radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako. Excuse me. May I please check your luggage? Niwie radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako. Kumladhi. I'm sorry. Kumladhi. Kumladhi. I'm sorry. Kumladhi. Nimechelewa. I'm sorry, I'm late. Kunlavi ni mechelewa. Lala salama. Good night. Lala salama. Lala salama. Good night. Nitaondoka sasa. Lala salama. I'll go now. Good night. Nitaondoka sasa. Lala salama. Ninafuraha kukutana nawe. Nice to meet you. 
Nina furaha kukutana nawe. Nina furaha kukutana nawe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana nawe. Rehema. Nice to meet you, Rehema. Nina furaha kukutana nawe, Rehema. Habari gani? How are you? Habari gani? Habari gani? How are you? Habari gani, mzee Juma? How are you, Mr. Juma? Habari gani, mzee Juma? Ndiyo. Yes. Ndiyo. Ndiyo. Yes. Ndiyo, najua. Yes, I know. Ndiyo, najua. Hapana. No. Hapana. Hapana. No. Hapana, sijafika, lakini niko njiani. No, I've not yet arrived, but I'm on the way. Hapana, sijafika, lakini niko njiani. Asante. Thank you. Asante. Asante. Thank you. Asante, lakini sija kuagiza hii. Thank you, but I didn't order this. Asante, lakini sija kuagiza hii. Mimi ni? I am. Mimi ni? Mimi ni? I am. Mimi ni Maria. I am Maria. Mimi ni Maria. Kwa heri. Goodbye. Kwa heri. Kwa heri. Goodbye. Kwa heri, tutaonana jioni. Goodbye, see you in the evening. Kwa heri, tutaonana jioni. Mbaya. Bad. Mbaya. Mbaya. Bad. Mwanamume ni mbaya. The man is bad. Mwanamume ni mbaya. Nzuri. Good. Nzuri. Nzuri. Good. Mboga ni nzuri kwa mwili wako. Vegetables are good for you. Mboga ni nzuri kwa mwili wako. Rembo. Pretty. Rembo. Rembo. Pretty. Nguo yako ni rembo sana. Your dress is very pretty. Nguo yako ni rembo sana. Sawijika. Ugly. Sawijika. Sawijika. Ugly. Mbwa yule amesawijika mno. 
That is a very ugly dog. Mbwa yule amesawijika mno. Rahisi. Easy. Rahisi. Rahisi. Easy. Bitha yao ni mpya ni maridadi na raisi kutumia. Their new product is really elegant and easy to use. Biza yao mpya ni maridadi na rahisi kutumia. Ngumu. Difficult. Ngumu. Ngumu. Difficult. Hisabati ni ngumu. Mathematics is difficult. Hisabati ni ngumu. Karibu. Near. Karibu. Karibu. Near. Naishi karibu na chuo kiku. I live near the university. Naishi karibu na chuo kiku. Mbali. Fa. Mbali. Mbali. Fa. Mwanamke anatazama kitu kilicho mbali zaid. The woman is looking at something far away. Mwanamke anatazama kitu kilicho mbali zaid. Ndogo. Small. Ndogo. Ndogo. Small. Ndogo sana. Very small. Ndogo sana. Well done. In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swailpod101.com to get access to full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversation. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke na mwanamume wanatazama picha. Ni picha gani wanalotazama? Hili ni picha ya timu ya kandanda alimu mwanao. Sivyo? Mwanao ni yupi? Huyu. Ala? Ni huyu mrefu. Ndiyo, hata ni mrefu kunishinda. Ni picha gani wanalotazama? Mwanamke na mwanamume wanatazama picha. Ni picha gani wanalotazama? Hili ni picha ya timu ya kandanda alimu mwanao. Sivyo? Mwanao ni yupi? Huyu. Ala? Ni huyu mrefu. Ndiyo. Hata ni mrefu kunishinda. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anaandaa nafasi kwenye hoteli. 
anaenda kuishi katika chumba gani? Hoteli ya pande ya kisiwa ya ni Seaside. Naweza kukusaidiaje? Ningelipenda kuishi usiku mmoja katika mwezi wa Septemba tarehe 22. Sawa. Usiku mmoja kutoka mwezi wa Septemba 22. Watu wangapi? Wawili. Ungelipenda chumba cha kuvuta au sio cha kuvuta sigara? Sio cha kuvuta. Chumba kisicho cha kuvuta siku hiyo ni kwenye sehemu ya kutazama mlima. Ni sawa kwako? Vema, nilikuwa natarajia kupata sehemu ya kutizama kisiwa. Ni wie radhi, lakini chumba kilichobaki sehemu hiyo ni ya kuvuta sigara. Naelewa. Kunayo chumba kisicho cha kuvuta sigara sehemu hii katika mwezi Septemba 23. Ndio, kunayo. Sawa, tutaishi kuanzia tarehe 23. Anaenda kuishi katika chumba gani? Mwanamke anaandaa nafasi kwenye hoteli. Anaenda kuishi katika chumba gani? Hoteli ya pande ya kisiwa ya ni Seaside. Naweza kukusaidiaje? Ningelipenda kuishi usiku mmoja katika mwezi wa Septemba tarehe 22. Sawa. Usiku mmoja kutoka mwezi wa Septemba 22. Watu wangapi? Wawili. Ungelipenda chumba cha kuvuta au sio cha kuvuta sigara? Sio cha kuvuta. Chumba kisicho cha kuvuta siku hiyo ni kwenye sehemu ya kutazama mlima. Ni sawa kwako? Vema, nilikuwa natarajia kupata sehemu ya kutizama kisiwa. Ni wie radhi, lakini chumba kilichobaki sehemu hiyo ni ya kuvuta sigara. Naelewa. Kunayo chumba kisicho cha kuvuta sigara sehemu hii katika mwezi Septemba 23. Ndio, kunayo. Sawa, tutaishi kuanzia tarehe 23. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mvulana anasoma kutoka kwa shajara lake. Nini cha kwanza alichokifanya mvulana huyu leo? Hali ya anga ilikuwa mzuri sana leo. Nilienda kuogelea alasiri hii katika bwao la kuogelea. Pia nilienda kwenye sinema jioni na nilisoma asubuhi mzima. Leo haikuwa siku mbaya. Nini cha kwanza alichokifanya mvulana huyu leo? Mvulana anasoma kutoka kwa shajara lake. Nini cha kwanza alichokifanya mvulana huyu leo? Hali ya anga ilikuwa mzuri sana leo. Nilienda kuogelea alasiri hii katika bwao la kuogelea. Pia nilienda kwenye sinema jioni na nilisoma asubuhi mzima. Leo haikuwa siku mbaya. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Love these lessons? Want more? You'll find the rest of our 3-minute lessons on the website. Sign up for your free lifetime account. You'll unlock the full course in seconds and learn how to read and write in Swahili. You also get tons of other audio and video lessons that will get you using the language from your very first lesson and teach you how to read, write, and speak. Plus, you'll get PDF lesson notes, cheat sheets, study tools, and much more. 
Click the link in the description below and sign up for your free lifetime account. Yes, welcome again. This is Medina. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Top words. Today we are going to look at 10 hardest words to pronounce in Swahili. Badai, later. Badai, later. Badai. For example, you can say, Tuona ne badai. See you later. Tu onane ba adai. Now, actually, I can understand why it's a little bit difficult word to pronounce because uh, looking back at my nephew, he was at that time around two, three years old. He had a very hard time saying ba adai. He used to say ba dea, ba dea, which is quite different. But now he made it up. He's okay. He says badai. Changia to contribute. Changia to contribute. Changia. Changia katika mikakati ya mambo maku. To contribute to a greater cause. Changia katika mikakati ya mambo maku. Hakuna matata. No worries. Hakuna matata. No worries. Hakuna matata. Hapa Kenya, hakuna matata. There are no worries here in Kenya. Actually, there's a song that goes, Kenya inchi yetu, hakuna matata. Nchi ya kupendeza, hakuna matata. That means that in our country, there are no worries. It's a lovable country. There are no worries. Yeah, hakuna matata is quite a handy word to use. Actually, it's in a song, so just learn the song and you get the word. If you're a fan of Lion King movie, I'm sure you've heard about this phrase. Kiangazi, hot season. Kiangazi, hot season. Kiangazi. Kuna kiangazi sana kaskazini mwanchi. The north part of the country is very dry. Kuna kiangazi sana kaskazini mwanchi. Kipupwe. Cool season. Kipupwe. Cool season. Kipupwe. What upata homa wakati wa kipupwe? People catch flu during the cool season. What upata homa wakati wa kipupwe? Mchungwa. Orange tree. Mchungwa. Orange tree. Mchungwa. Nimelala hapa. Chini ya mti wa mchungwa. I am lying here under an orange tree. Nimelala hapa chini ya mti wa mchungwa. Ngangana to strive. Ngangana to strive. Ngangana. Na ngangana kuwa wa kwanza. I'm striving to be the first one. Ngangana. Can you try saying it out? Nga. Nga, na. Do you realize that you stick your tongue at the back upper part of your mouth and then the voice comes through your nose? Nga, nga, na. Hope you did it. Ngombe, cow. Ngombe, cow. Ngombe. Hawa ni ngombe wawili. Hawa ni ngombe wawili. These are two cows. Ngombe is similar like ngang, ngana, mean the way you stick the tongue behind and to the top of your mouth. But now you're using the o sound. You're trying to make the o sound. Try it again. Ngo, ngo, ngombe. Hope you made it. Taka, taka, trash. Taka, taka, trash. Taka, taka. Kutupa takataka, to empty the trash. Kutupa takataka. Now, takataka can be used in different ways. For example, if someone says takataka, it will mean something really bad or wasteful or something that is annoying. If someone says, wewe ni takataka, it means you're wasteful or you're a waste. So you can use it different ways. But you know what? Don't use it to your friend or someone. <laughs> I mean, 
it's it, it's not a good word to use in other words so be careful when you use it nyanyasa oppress nyanyasa oppress nyanyasa matajiri wananyanyasa maskini the rich oppress the poor matajiri wananyanyasa maskini thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video was it a long way to learn the top hardest word to pronounce in Swahili? Did you get it right to say ngangana and ngombe? If you did, and if you liked our videos, we'd like to hear your comments in the comment section. And please, don't forget to visit our website, swahilipod101.com, for more lessons. See you! Bye! Kwaheri! Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anaripoti katika mkutano kuhusu nyendo za mauzo ya kampuni yake. Anatumia chati gani kati ya hizi mbili katika hotuba yake? Tafadhali tazama kijikaratasi. Chati ya kushoto inaonesha mauzo ya kampuni yetu katika miaka tatu iliyopita na utabiri wa mauzo katika mwaka huu. Chati ya kulia inaonesha mauzo katika miezi hadi mwezi wa Oktoba wa mwaka huu. Sasa tafadhali tazama chati ya kushoto. Inaonyesha vile mazao ilikuwa ikiongezeka kwa utaratibu katika miaka tatu iliyopita. Tukiweza kupandisha mauzo yetu, mauzo kwa jumla ya mwaka huu utaonyesha kuongezeka kutoka mwaka jana. Aidha tazama chati ya pili. Inaonesha kuwa kampeni tulizofanya Aprili na Agosti zilikuwa za manufaa. Naelewa lakini mauzo yalipungua Mei na Septemba tukifuatilia makampeni. Ndio. Lakini matukio kama haya hayawezi kuepukika. Natarajia mauzo ya kila mwaka katika mwaka huu kupanda ukilinganishwa na mwaka jana, ijapokuwa tutazidi kuongeza mauzo yetu. Anatumia chati gani kati ya hizi mbili katika hotuba yake? Mwanamume anaripoti katika mkutano kuhusu nyendo za mauzo ya kampuni yake. Anatumia chati gani kati ya hizi mbili katika hotuba yake? Tafadhali tazama kijikaratasi. Chati ya kushoto inaonesha mauzo ya kampuni yetu katika miaka tatu iliyopita na utabiri wa mauzo katika mwaka huu. Chati ya kulia inaonesha mauzo katika miezi hadi mwezi wa Oktoba wa mwaka huu. Sasa tafadhali tazama chati ya kushoto. Inaonyesha vile mazao ilikuwa ikiongezeka kwa utaratibu katika miaka tatu iliyopita. Tukiweza kupandisha mauzo yetu, mauzo kwa jumla ya mwaka huu utaonyesha kuongezeka kutoka mwaka jana. Aidha tazama chati ya pili. Inaonesha kuwa kampeni tulizofanya Aprili na Agosti zilikuwa za manufaa. Naelewa. Lakini mauzo yalipungua Mei na Septemba tukifuatilia makampeni. Ndio. Lakini matukio kama haya hayawezi kuepukika. Natarajia mauzo ya kila mwaka katika mwaka huu kupanda ukilinganishwa na mwaka jana ijapokuwa tutazidi kuongeza mauzo yetu. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. You are at a bus terminal where you've just bought a long distance ticket. Which row and seat number are you in?
Which row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in the eighth row in seat C. Safulanane kiticha. Okay, welcome again. It's Medina on Swahili Top Words. Today we're going to look at something that may be fun, I would say. Not for everyone though, but we're going to have fun in this lesson. 10 phrases for surviving back to school. Let us psych up our attitude and let's get going. Mfuko. Mfuko. Backpack. Mfuko. Backpack. Huo ni mfuko wangu. Huo ni mfuko wangu. That is my backpack. Yes. I'm ready to go to school. That is my backpack. Mwenzangu darasani. Mwenzangu darasani. Classmate. Mwenzangu darasani. Classmate. Juma. Ni mwenzangu darasani. Juma ni mwenzangu darasani. Juma is my classmate. Did I have Juma as a classmate? Not really, but uh, I had many classmates. I can't remember, but I have good memories of all of you. The fun guys, the fun ladies. I miss all of you. And my dedication for this lesson to you, my classmates. Kazia Ziada. Kazi ya ziada. Homework. Kazi ya ziada. Homework. Nafanya kazi ya ziada sasa. Nafanya kazi ya ziada sasa. I am doing my homework now. Ask me why. I am late. I'm running late. The deadline is in an hour's time and I have a lot to do. I am hurrying and... So nervous. Anyone identifies with my experience? You should get things going early. Mtihani. Mtihani. Exam. Mtihani. Exam. Tunafanya mtihani wiki ijayo. Tunafanya mtihani wiki ijayo. We are sitting for exams next week oh time is running time is running i feel like i haven't done enough for that exam only if they could suspend it i'll be so happy but you know what i can't help it but i got to read i got to read oh majira ya likizo majira ya likizo summer break Majira ya likizo. Summer break. Majira ya likizo nitapumzika kutoka kwa masomo. Majira ya likizo nitapumzika kutoka kwa masomo. During summer break, I will take a rest from studies. Anyone as happy as I am? Yeah, and summer break is even longer. What are you going to do? I am so happy. But you know what? Don't forget to Get a book and read, even some novel or something like that. You know, studies never end. But I know relaxing is the point there. Relax and take advantage of it. Shule. Shule. School. Shule. School. Shule yetu inaitwa Bryban. Shule yetu inaitwa Bryban. Our school is called Bryban. Kind of fancy name, right? <laughs> Tell me the name of your school. We want to hear it. Some of our school names are in our mother tongues. I would like to hear those, especially. Bryban is an international school in Nairobi, and it stretches to other neighboring countries like Tanzania. It offers British or international curriculum. You can feel comfortable to visit Bryban. And if you want to relocate to Kenya, <laughs> why not think about joining Bryban or something?
I mean, it's a really cool school. Really cool. You can try it and go for a walk. Yeah, you can try an open campus actually and, and just to, to, to figure out how this school is. I wish you luck. Soma. Soma. To study. Soma. To study. Tunasoma masomo nane kwa siku. Tunasoma masomo nane. Nane kwa siku. We study eight lessons per day. Eight lessons per day. Yeah, I know. I have those experiences. But now I only have four lessons. And sometimes I am free. I enjoy my world here. Persevere. Soon you'll come on my side. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. It's the first day of school. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. It's the first day of class. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. It's the first day of class. How do you feel on your first day of class? Are you excited to go see your friends, meet your teachers, get in that class? Hmm, the first day of class for me, do I even remember the feeling? Yeah, usually I'm kind of nervous because I'm like, oh, those homeworks are coming back again. No more rest for like three months or so. But I'm always excited to listen to my teachers and their insights and to have fun with my friends. Tuko katika darasa moja. Tuko katika darasa moja. We're in the same class. Tuko katika darasa moja. We're in the same class. How does it feel to meet your long-time friend after so many years in the same class? Perhaps... You had not met for some years and then in the university on your first year, you come and you meet each other. I can't imagine the excitement, but for me, I'll be so, so excited. You'll notice that in this sentence, there's an interjection mark. Right? It, it's, it's a surprise. Perhaps meeting someone after a long time, you know? So it comes with that kind of excitement, the interjections, like a surprise thing. Actually, I think, I think in this sentence, we tend to express our emotions. So towards the end, you kind of raise your voice a little bit. You know, there's some kind of an emphasis towards the end, just to show the surprise. J, unachukua madarasa gani? J, unachukua madarasa gani? What classes are you taking? J, unachukua madarasa gani? What classes are you taking? I know sometimes it could be tricky to know what classes you want to take, especially when you're new to these things, you know? <laughs> but uh, I remember my, my favorite class was of philosophy and psychology. I just liked the insights and the way our teachers would analyze facts. I don't know whether they were facts, but theories, you know? getting all these things together. It was really fun. What is your favorite subject? Please write to us on your comments. We'd we'll love to hear what you say. Thank you for listening. That's the end of our lesson today. I hope you got some facts or ideas on how to survive back to school. And we'd like to hear from you on how you survive back at school or how you're surviving back at school. Please write them down there on our comments section. And do not forget to subscribe. Please visit our website, swahilipod101.com for more lessons and exciting, more fun lessons. Thank you so much. See you. Bye. Yes, welcome to Swahilipod101. Again, it's Medina with you. Now, today we are going to do something really special. We are going to talk about 10 words you never want to hear. No, don't say this on my ears. You know, something like that. Do you have that experience? Now, follow me and let's have fun.
Je, umeongeza uzito hivi karibuni? Je, umeongeza uzito hivi karibuni? Have you gained weight recently? Actually, in Kenya, adding weight is not really a big issue because people think the bigger you are in mass, <laughs> the wealthier you are or the richer you are. So there's nothing really bad about adding weight when you compare it with other countries like probably Japan or the States where you may get hard when someone talks about your weight. So feel free in Kenya. The only problem comes in when you're really cutting weight. <laughs> so it's the opposite. If you're really cutting weight, yeah, people will be asking you, oh, what's happening, you know? What, what's happening? Don't you have food? Or are you stressed? So there are those kind of cultural differences. Una nywele ya rangi jivu. Una nywele ya rangi jivu. You have gray hair. You know, you know, people have a difficult time accepting the fact that they are growing old. Yet it's a paradox of life, right? You're celebrating your birthday, but at the same time you're growing old. Now, when you're growing old, it, it reaches a point when you're growing gray hair, right? And it's, it's evident. You cannot hide it unless you're coloring your hair. Now, in, in Kenya, really, you don't want to tell someone that they're growing gray hair. You better say it with your friends about somebody. But, you know, that will be gossiping. So I don't really recommend it. But uh, usually, you see the gray hair and keep it inside your heart. You appreciate the fact that, yes, yeah, someone is growing and you keep it. At that. Nilikweleza hivyo. Nilikweleza hivyo. I told you so. Actually, when you say it naturally, it comes out in a kind of arrogant way. Let's try it in Swahili. Nilikweleza hivyo. I told you so, you know? This is someone who kind of warned you beforehand that uh, do not go that way. Then unfortunately, I mean, at that time, it's not really unfortunate, but you know, you did it, and then there are those kind of consequences or circumstances, I mean, things that happen that are not really good. Then you come back and, you know, your friend who warned you says on your face, I told you so. You don't want to hear that at that moment, especially when things have gone bad, you know? Umefutwa kazi. Umefutwa kazi. You're fired. You know, this phrase, when someone is firing you, sometimes they say it in a polite way, right? Umefutwa kazi. Not to make you feel like, okay, oh, the world is ending. But there are those ones who come literally and say, umefutwa kazi. You know what I mean? Like, you're fired. Like, literally. It's like, fire is coming on its way right there and then, and you feel like hell is burning loose. But, but you know what? It's, it's one phrase that we do not really want to hear and neither do we want to tell. Imagine someone is fired. I mean, I have friends who have been fired and they will never want to tell. You'll just see by yourself. You'll not see them get, getting out of the house and you're like, oh, what happened? You don't even want to go ask, you know? You're afraid. So you ask the neighbors, you hear from the neighbor that, oh, I'm a futwa kazi, which is kind of very sad. It's not a phrase that you want to hear. Not from your good friend either, right? Sio wewe ni mimi. Sio wewe ni mimi. It's not you. It's me. You know, this is one of the common phrases we hear when people are breaking up. Usually someone says this to take responsibility of the situation, like the breaking up. It sounds like polite, but it's like a cliche nowadays and it's not a fun word to say. Sio wewe ni mimi. Hope you never meet this word. <laughs> I wish you luck. Asante kwa wasifu wako. Hata hivyo, nafasi hiyo ishachukuliwa. Asante kwa wasifu wako. Hata hivyo, nafasi hiyo ishachukuliwa. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been failed. Okay, let us imagine your... your looking for a job like yes seriously and uh, and honestly this is seriously in kenya because we have a pool of undergraduates who are looking for jobs every day you know you actually advertise for one position like this and you find like more than 1000 applicants you're like okay okay well, how 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 should i prove myself to be smart 
And you know, it's not like you've applied for one job. You've applied for quite a number of jobs. And this is the same message they send you. It's quite frustrating. You don't want to hear it. Anyway, if you're someone looking for a job, I am praying for you. Do not give up though. Keep going, keep fighting. That's what we were meant for. Tuwaone watu wengine. Tuwaone watu wengine. We shall see other people. Now, this is a sad phrase in itself. Already, like, it's an explanation in itself. Someone is breaking up with you and with that arrogance, like, oh, let's go see other people, you know? It's like he already has many other options. <laughs> Probably you're just one of them and you're like, oh, he's giving up on you to try the other options. It's quite sad though, right? It's quite sad. And like previously, I hope this never comes your way. But the bright side is you may end up getting someone who will treat you better than the person who has left you. So never give up hope. Sina pesa yako leo. Sina pesa yako leo. I don't have your money today. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm laughing, but it, it's quite serious. And it's quite a common phrase I hear quite from a lot of my friends. You know, when you're, borrowing, when you're lending money, you should lend the amount you know you're willing to lose. <laughs> That's what my mother tells me every time. Because, yeah. You lend this money and you go asking for it and the person says, I don't have your money today. And you know, you go back tomorrow and it's another today. So those two days sometimes never come to an end. So whenever you're lending money, just be careful. Be careful how much you're lending and to who. Once beaten, twice shy. So if you're lending money to the same person who says that I don't have my, your money today, huh? You, you have to think again. I wish you luck in this. Ina paswa tuonge. Ina paswa tuonge. We need to talk. For me, for me, this is one of the phrases that are for real. I, I never want to hear. And when, I, when it gets into my ears, I'm like, oh, there's trouble. I get so tensed up. I get so uncomfortable. And I just want to get out of it. I want to ask the person, okay, let's do it now so that we end it right now. I don't know about you. Please tell us your feelings. Are the comment sections later. We'd like to hear what you say. Nataka siku za kupumzika toka kazini. Nataka siku za kupumzika kutoka kazini. I want days off. Now, this is one of the words you don't want to hear when it's busy in the office. <laughs> you know, it makes you imagine like, oh, why are you why do you want days off when it's actually Peak time, you know, we have so many clients coming in, then you want days off. Are you running away from work? You know, I think you, you may relate to this if you're in a busy, I mean, work area. You're a manager or something like that, you know. It's one word you never want to hear. Yes, we have come to the end of 10 phrases you never want to hear. Yes, I totally agree. Some of these ones, seriously, I never want to hear. If I know it's coming, I literally run away. Yes, like I'm, I'm avoiding that person, you know? You know what I mean? You could relate to me and we would like to hear from you. Please write your comments down there and give us more examples of some of the phrases you never want to hear. And please do not forget to subscribe and visit our website, swahilipod101.com. See you, Kwaheri! You have a gray hair. Oh, when you're growing old kind of thingy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute when I think of it. Samahani Nilisa Hao. Yeah, this is a teacher. And this is a student to a teacher. <laughs> I don't know which other what places this will apply. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is funny. You know, it makes me remember yeah. things that I've never thought about.
Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anatafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibie katika duka la shaufu. Atanunua dani gani? Naweza kukusaidia? Natafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibi yangu. Unasifia gani? Nam, unaonaje dani hili hapa? Hmm. Linafanana ndefu kidogo. Na hivi hapa kuna moja na shamili la ua na moja lina roho. Natafuta kitu kilichosifika. Dani hili la lulu ni bei ngapi? Ni shilingi elf mia tatu. Hmm. Hilo ni bei gali sana. Nitachukua cha kwanza. Sawa, hapa upo. Atanunua dani gani? Mwanamume anatafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibie katika duka la shaufu. Atanunua dani gani? Naweza kukusaidia? Natafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibi yangu. Unasifia gani? Nam, unaonaje dani hili hapa? Hmm. Linafanana ndefu kidogo. Na hivi hapa kuna moja na shamili la ua na moja lina roho. Natafuta kitu kilichosifika. Dani hili la lulu ni bei ngapi? Ni shilingi elf mia tatu. Hmm. Hilo ni bei gali sana. Nitachukua cha kwanza. Sawa, hapa upo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anapiga simu kwa afisi ya daktari. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari sangapi? I say, ni kusaidieje? Unafunga saa ngapi leo? Tunafunga saa mbili lakini ufike kabla ya saa moja unusu tafadhali. Sawa, asante. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari sangapi? Mwanamume anapiga simu kwa afisi ya daktari. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari saa ngapi? I say, ni kusaidieje? Unafunga saa ngapi leo? Tunafunga saa mbili lakini ufike kabla ya saa moja unusu tafadhali. Sawa, asante. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. You've just gotten off a bus at a bus terminal. Suddenly, a person hands you a leaflet. What kind of deal is offered on this leaflet? What kind of deal is offered on this leaflet? The offer is buy two, get one free. 
Nunua mbili, pata moja bila malipo. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Siku kuu ya mwaka mpya inasherehekewa mnamo tarehe moja Januari kila mwaka. Hii ni siku ambayo watu wengi utazama maisha yao ya mwaka uliopita na kutaka kubadilisha mazimio yao na kuwa na mtazamo mpya wa maisha. Funzo hili litatuangazia jinsi watu hujiburudisha pamoja na jamaa na marafiki. Je, ni wakati upi ambao watu wengi hupata muda wa kubadilisha mielekeo ya maisha yao? Ni wakati gani wa mwaka wazazi wengi huwanunulia watoto wao zawadi mpya? Tutaonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni wa video hii. Watu hungoja siku kuu ya mwaka mpya kwa shauku kuu. Waamini huenda kanisani na kukesha huku wakingoja saa sita ya usiku kuwasili. Watu wengine huona heri kwenda kwa makao ya burudani na kujistaherehesha kwa kuimba na kupiga miziki. Saa sita ya usiku ikifika wao hupiga nduru, kurusha miele ya moto na kukaribisha mwaka mpya kwa hoi hoi na nderemo. Watu hutuma ujumbe mfupi kwa jamaa na marafiki na kukaribisha mwaka mpya. Walio katika mahali pa ibada huomba na kumshukuru Mungu. Asubuhi ifikapo, watu huanza kutayarisha mlo wa kipekee pamoja na vinywaji. Wao huwalika wageni na kuwapa burudani mrwa kabisa. Watu wengine upendelea kuchinja mbuzi na kupika chakula kama chapati, mkimo, pilao na vitoweo vya aina mbalimbali. Vinywaji hupatikana kwa wingi, nazo ni kama soda, maji ya matunda, pombe na vileo tofauti. Masai ya alasiri, watu wanapomaliza kula na kunywa wao huvalia mavazi mapya yanayopendeza na kuenda mahala pa kujistarehesha. Kwa mfano, wanaweza kwenda kuona wanyama wapori ama kuogelea huko pwani. Siku kuu kama hii hufanya utalii wa kinyumbani kufana sana. Siku hii watu hufanya matendo ya kutia fora kwa sababu wana imani ya kwamba wakiwa wazuri mwanzoni mwaka wao utakuwa wenye fanaka. Wao huanza na nia mpya. Na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali. Je ni wakati upi ambao watu wengi hupata muda wa kubadilisha milekeo ya maisha yao? Ni wakati upi wa mwaka wazazi wengi huwanunulia watoto wao zawadi mpya? Watu wengi huchukulia siku kuu hii kama wakati wa kwanza minindo mapya. Wazazi pia hutaka kuwafurahisha wanao wa wapendao kwa zawadi tofauti. Funzo hili lilikuwa je? Je, ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, Nyinyi husherekea siku kuu ya mwaka mpya kama wa Kenya? Tuachie maoni yako katika swahili podwano1.com kisha tunane katika somo lifuatalo. Kwa heri. You are sitting on a bus that is about to arrive at the next bus stop. Suddenly, a signal lights up. What does the signal mean? What does the signal mean? The signal reads, please stay seated until the bus stops. Tafadhali, keti hadi basi lisimame. Hi everyone! 
Do you know the 1,000 most useful phrases in Swahili? In this lesson, you'll be able to know all of them, so sit back, relax, and have a cup of tea as you listen and learn. Bafu liko wapi? Tafadhali. La haula. Nina hifadhi. Hii ni pesa ngapi? Hili ni nini? Asante. Kweli? Unaweza kunipunguzia bei? Hiyo wifi ni bure. Ningeweza kupata cheki? Je, una mapendekezo yoyote? Naweza kuna hii. You just learned the 1000 most useful phrases in Swahili. And if you're interested in learning more, try learning the core 2000 word list. With this, you'll understand 95% of the language, and best of all, this is not a joke. Check out the description below and go to swahilipod101.com now. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanatazama orodha ya chakula hotelini. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Utaagiza nini? Pizza linaonekana tamu. Nadhani nitaliagiza. Nilikula pizza jana kwa hivyo. Sawa. Hamburger J. Chaguo bora. Nitakiagiza. Mwanamme ataagiza nini? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanatazama orodha ya chakula hotelini. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Utaagiza nini? Pizza linaonekana tamu. Nadhani nitaliagiza. Nilikula pizza jana kwa hivyo. Sawa. Hamburger J. Chaguo bora. Nitakiagiza. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea. Ni lini mwanamume anapaka rangi? Huwa unapaka rangi kila siku? Ndiyo. Kuanzia saa tatu asubuhi hadi saa moja jioni. Kuanzia saa tatu hadi saa moja? Ni masaa kumi. Ndiyo. Hii ni kazi yangu. Ni lini mwanamume anapaka rangi? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea. Ni lini mwanamume anapaka rangi? Huwa unapaka rangi kila siku? Ndiyo. Kuanzia saa tatu asubuhi hadi saa moja jioni. Kuanzia saa tatu hadi saa moja? Ni masaa kumi. Ndiyo. Hii ni kazi yangu. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time.
Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anamuuliza muuzaji jambo katika duka la vitabu. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Samahani, ningelipenda kutazama kitabu katika rafu ile ya vitabu. Ni kitabu kipi unachokitaka? Kile cha magari. Ngoja kidogo tafadhali. Hiki Ndiyo. Hiki hapa. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Mwanamke anamuuliza muuzaji jambo katika duka la vitabu. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Samahani. Ningelipenda kutazama kitabu katika rafu ile ya vitabu. Ni kitabu kipi unachokitaka? Kile cha magari. Ngoja kidogo tafadhali. Hiki? Ndiyo. Hiki hapa. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, do you know how to say thank you in Swahili? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with the easiest one. Asante. Asante. Another way to say thank you is Nashkuru. Nashkuru. Finally, here's a third way to express your gratitude. Asanteni. Asanteni. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Asante. Asante. Nashkuru. Nashkuru. Asanteni. Asanteni. Well done. You just learned three different ways to say thank you in Swahili. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Swahili from the very first lesson, go to SwahiliPod101.com. See you next time. Yes, it's Medina again. Welcome to SwahiliPod101. This is Topwoods. Today, we're going to look at the top 25 verbs in Swahili. Welcome. Kua, to be. The first verb is kua. To be, kuwa. For example, we can say, Ili kukua katibu mwema, inabidi ujue kuratibu. In order to be a good secretary, you have to be good at organizing. Kupenda, to like. Kupenda, to like. Kupenda. Bila shaka na kupenda, of course I like you. That's quite a handy word to use. Kufanya, to do. Kufanya, to do. Kufanya mazoezi kutakusaidia kupoteza uzido. Doing exercises will help you lose weight. Kusema, to say. Kusema, to say. Nilimfunza mtoto wangu kusema karibu, anapuambiwa asante. Nilimfunza mtoto wangu kusema karibu, anapuambiwa asante. I taught my toddler to say, you're welcome, when he's told, Thanks. Kueleza to explain. Kueleza to explain. We can say, 
ubao mweupe ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. A whiteboard is a perfect means to explain something visually. Ubao mweupe ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. Kusikia to hear. Kusikia to hear. Kusikia. Kifaru ana hisia ya hali ya juu ya kusikia na kunusa. Kifaru ana hisia ya hali ya juu ya kusikia na kunusa. The rhino has a good sense of hearing and smelling. Kwenda to go. Kwenda to go. Kwenda. Nataka kwenda dukani. I want to go to the shop. Nataka kwenda dukani. Kujua to know. Kujua to know. Kujua. Pia mimi nafurahia kukujua. Me too. I'm happy to know you. Pia mimi nafurahia kukujua. Kuchukua to take. Kuchukua to take. Kuchukua. Usisahau kuchukua picha yangu tafadhali. Don't forget to take my picture. Usisahau kuchukua picha yangu tafadhali. Kuona to see. Kuona to see. Kuona. Kwa heri ya kuonana. Bye. See you again. Kwa heri ya kuonana. Kuja to come. Kuja to come. Kuja. Ikiwezekana, nigelipenda kuja kesho tena. If possible, I would like to come back tomorrow. Ikiwezekana, nigelipenda kuja kesho tena. Kufikiria to think. Kufikiria to think. Kufikiria. Fikiria unachotaka. Unipe jibu kesho. Think about what you want and give me the answer by tomorrow. Fikiria unachotaka. Unipe jibu kesho. Kuangalia to look. Kuangalia to look. Kuangalia. Hangeweza kusita. Kuangalia kwenye sinema. She couldn't stop looking at the screen. Hangeweza kusita kuangalia kwenye sinema. Kutaka to want. Kutaka to want. Ninataka kwenda kulala mapema leo. I want to go to sleep early today. Ninataka kwenda kulala mapema leo. Kupea to give. Kupeana to give. Hawakupeana ya kutosha. They didn't give enough. Hawakupeana ya kutosha. Kutumia to use. Kutumia to use. Ni line gani ninayopaswa kutumia? Which line am I supposed to use? Ni line gani ninayopaswa kutumia? Kutafuta to find. Kutafuta to find. Usipoteze wakati wako kutafuta kazi ya hali ya juu. Anza tu kufanya kazi. Don't waste time looking for the ultimate job. Just start working. Usipoteze wakati wako kutafuta kazi ya hali ya juu. Anza tu kufanya kazi. Kwenda nje to go out. Kwenda nje to go out. Kwa hakika tunahofia. Lakini hauwezi enda nje leo usiku. We are really sorry, but you cannot go out tonight. Kwa hakika tunahofia, lakini hauwezi kwenda nje leo usiku. Kuuliza to ask. Kuuliza to ask. Nitakuuliza mara nyingine moja. I will only ask you one more time. Nitakuuliza mara nyingine moja. Kufanya kazi to work. Kufanya kazi to work. 
Naomba unisaidie kufanya kazi hii. I request that you help me do this work. Naomba unisaidie kufanya kazi hii. Kuingia to enter. Kuingia to enter. Hauwezi kuingia bila kibali. You cannot enter without permission. Hauwezi kuingia bila kibali. Kuhisi to feel. Kuhisi to feel. Kuhisi. Na hisi vizuri. I feel good. Na hisi vizuri. Kujaribu to try. Kujaribu to try. Kujaribu. Ningelipenda kuchagua kitu ambacho sijawahi kujaribu. I would like to try something I've never tried before. Ningelipenda kuchagua kitu ambacho sijawahi kujaribu. Kuondoka to leave. Kuondoka to leave. Kuondoka. Watu huzoea kuondoka nyumbani na kwenda kazini wakati wajua kupaa. People usually leave home for work at sunrise. Watu huzoea kuondoka nyumbani na kwenda kazini wakati wajua kupaa. Kuita to call. Kuita to call. Kuita. Nitakuita papo nitapofika nyumbani. I will call once I arrive home. Nitakuita papo nitapofika nyumbani. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. How was it? If you liked it, please, we'd like to hear your comments. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com for more lessons. See you then. Bye. Kwaheri. Trying to learn Swahili? You need a SwahiliPod101.com free lifetime account. It's one of the most powerful language learning tools you can command, and signing up takes less than seven seconds. So what exactly do you get that makes it so special? First, new lessons are published every week, and you get them for free. Enjoy learning with fun and effective audio and video lessons with real teachers. Make the most of your study time as our teachers help you hack Swahili, and get you speaking in minutes. Second, free instant access to the first three lessons of every lesson series. Explore and try any lesson series that interests you, from beginner to advanced. Find teachers you love and lessons for your goals. Third, learn Swahili anywhere, anytime with the free companion app. Download it now for free for the iPhone, iPad, or any Android device and have instant access to your free lifetime account and lessons anywhere, anytime. Fourth, boost your vocabulary with the free word of the day. Every day, receive one new word in your inbox that you can master in seconds. Want even more words? Five, get complete access to our word and phrase lists. Wow native Swahili speakers with cool, topical, and seasonal words and phrases from our lists. And finally, number six, the best for last. Seven days of unlimited access to our entire library of audio and video lessons. Premium study tools like line-by-line -line audio, word bank, and smart flashcards to help you learn lightning fast. Get your free lifetime account right now at swahilipod101.com. Sign up in less than seven seconds and the account is yours for free for life. So what are you waiting for? Get yours now. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Today, we are going to look at the top 25 phrases in Swahili. Let's have fun. Jumbo. Hello. Okay, the first phrase is Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Jumbo is one of the most 
simple greetings in Kenya. Anyone can use it at any time. In fact, we love using it with tourists. Please visit Kenya and just say jumbo. Habariza asubui. Good morning. Okay, the next phrase is habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza asubui. We often wake up tired sometimes in the morning, but it doesn't cost to say habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza mchana. Good afternoon. The next phrase is habariza mchana. Good afternoon. Habariza mchana. You know, in the afternoon when you meet someone, you're like, oh, habari za mchana. Habari means news. So you're trying to ask someone, okay, how is your afternoon? Tell me anything that is happening in your afternoon. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Yes, it's time to sleep. I th sometimes look forward to that time and, you know, I, I, I look forward to saying good night to my friends or to my family or to my whatever person who is there. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? It's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Mimi naitwa. I'm Mimi naitwa Medina. My name is Medina. Mimi naitwa Medina. Now, this is actually an answer to the previous question. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Now, you have to keep this in mind that, you know, if you use this word frequently, you'll be able to tell people about your name. You'll be able to tell people your name. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. I mean, it's really polite. I always feel like energized when someone says, nice to meet you. <laughs> it can be awkward when someone says, oh, I did not want to meet you, you know. <laughs> but we rarely hear that. Just use that word, nice to meet you. Habarigani. How are you? Habari gani? How are you? Habari in Swahili means news. And gani means what? So what news? Actually, what you're trying to ask here is like, what, what do you have? I mean, what is all about your life right now in a polite way, you know? Then someone will say, mzuri, or it's okay. They will not go on telling you whatever is happening all around. But, you know, they'll just say it's fine or not good, you know? So it's an important phrase. Niko salama, asante, na wewe. I am fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante. Fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante means, oh, I'm fine. Literally, that is what it means. I'm fine, thank you. Then you, you take it back. What about you? You are concerned about the person who is asking you, you know? If you just say, oh, I'm fine, thanks, then you keep quiet, you know? I mean... We do that sometimes, but you know, sometimes you want to show concern, so you ask, Na wewe, and you? Tafadhali, please. Tafadhali, please. It's a magic word all around the world. So tafadhali is one of those words that you want to embrace when you visit Kenya. Tafadhali, whenever you're asking a favor, just say, Tafadhali, excuse me, Tafadhali, Tafadhali. That's one great word you need to remember. Asante. Thank you. Asante. Thank you. It's also one of the magic words that relates to tafadhali. Please. You know, asante is like you're appreciating whatever favor you received from someone who did you a favor. So it's also one of those words you, you like to embrace whenever and wherever. Karibu. You're welcome. Karibu. You're welcome. Karibu. Karibu is one of the most common words used in Kenya. For example, when someone knocks your door, you'll say, oh, karibu. That means come in or welcome, actually. Then in some circumstances when someone gives you something, you'll say thank you, right? Now, the person who is giving you will say karibu. Karibu means welcome. So <laughs> it can be a joke. But you know what? You can go and ask the 
you can go and ask as many favors as, as you can because they said karibu. I mean, that's a joke. <laughs> you don't have to take it seriously though. <laughs> Dio. Yes. Dio. Yes. Dio. Dio is a response. Whenever someone asks a question, you can say Dio if it's a positive answer. I mean, to the question. I mean, it, it depends. You know, there are the yes, no questions. Yeah, that is where it lies. Dio. Umefika Kenya? Dio. Umekula chakula? Dio. Umefika Kenya means, have you arrived in Kenya? You'll say yes, which is Dio. Have you eaten food? Umekula chakula? You'll say Dio. Yes. Hapana. No. Hapana. No. Hapana. Hapana is an answer to the yes, no question. Just like Dio. Dio means yes, as we looked at it previously. Now here it's no. Umefika Kenya? Hapana. Have you arrived in Kenya? No. Umekula chakula? Have you eaten food? No. Hapana. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Sawa is used to acknowledge that you agree to whatever has been said. For example, you can say, Sawa, nimeelewa maelezo yako. Okay, I've understood the explanation. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. This is a very handy word, especially when you want someone to excuse you for something. Niwie radhi. Nawezangalia mzigo wako? Excuse me, can I check your bag? Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. Samahani is also one of those polite words that you really need to remember. It comes handy when you make a mistake. Samahani, nimechelewa. I'm very sorry that I'm late. Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. Of course, you'll want to know time. If you cannot see see the time, probably there's no wall clock around, or perhaps your phone is off to check, or perhaps you forgot your wristwatch. You'll ask your friend, Nisangapi? Msala niwapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani niwapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani niwapi? Now, for real, you may need this word really, especially if nature keeps calling on you, you know? You may want to ask, hey, tafadali, msalani niwapi? Excuse me, where is the restroom? Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. When you're caught up doing something and someone asks for a favor, you may use this word. Just a moment. Subiri kidogo. Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahi ni nini. Now, he there stands for the thing that you want to buy. For example, you can say, Beyahi nguo ni nini. How much is this dress? Saidia, help. Saidia, help. Saidia. Saidia! Imagine you're drowning. What will you do? You'll shout, Saidia! Help! When you're in trouble, I mean, this word comes in handy. I think you may want to use it. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. After you meet with your friend, you have a chat with how him, you'll definitely say, bye, see you later, when you're padding. I think it's also in one of those polite words that you may want to add to your list. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Now, Kwaheri reminds me of those toughest moments in my life. You know, when I went abroad to study and my family was back um, in my country, the toughest moments was when we were parting. You know, I will never want to say Kwaheri. I will never want to say goodbye. I will never even want to add it out, but I will just say it with tears 
rolling down my, my cheeks. Yeah, quite hairy. It's a good word to use whenever you're padding. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui. This is a word that you'll, you, you'll use when you acknowledge that for sure you're not sure about the answer to the question or to the situation that is happening at the moment. Some people think it's impolite to say Sijui, especially when you're asking for directions. They'll try to give information which might be wrong to show that they are polite. So you got to be careful. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, do not forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com. Kwaheri, see you again. Hamjamboni, Mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers 1 to 10. Do you still remember? Let's go through them once more. Moja, Mbili, Tatu, Mne, Tano, Sita. Saba, nane, tisa, kumi. And now, let's continue from 11. Kumi na moja. Kumi na moja. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na nne. Kumi na nne. Kumi na tano. Kumi na tano. Kumi na sita. Kumi na sita. Kumi na saba. Kumi na saba. Kumi na nane. Kumi na nane. Kumi na tisa. Kumi na tisa. Okay. Now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Kumi na moja. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na nne. Kumi na tano. Kumi na sita. Kumi na saba. Kumi na nane. Kumi na tisa. These numbers might seem long and a little difficult, but the idea is actually very simple. Just take kumi and add any one of the numbers between 0 and 10 that you learned in the previous lesson. Let's take a look at 11. Kumi na moja. Kumi is 10. Join it with moja, 1, using na. Together we have kumi na moja. Kumi na moja. You can do the same with other numbers. Now, do you realize the advantage of mastering the first numbers you learned in the previous lesson? Moving on. 20 and other multiples of 10 take different names. Let's go through them. Ishirini. Ishirini. Thelathini. Thelathini. Arobaini, Arobaini, Hamsini, Hamsini, Sitini, Sitini, Sabini, Sabini, Themanini, Themanini, Tisini, Tisini, and lastly, Miamoja, Mia. Moja. All these numbers take a ni 
at the end, except for mere, meaning 100. This is an easy way to remember these numbers. The last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the first lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say 38 in Swahili? Let's take it step by step. 30 is telathini and then add 8, nane. In between telathini and nane is the conjunction na, meaning and, to join them. Telathini na nane. It's as simple as that. Let's try another one, like 72. First, take 70, sabini, and then add 2, bili, to get sabini na bili. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When you want to count beyond 100, you can use the same basic logic as with the numbers above 10. Just add the word mia moja, 100, in front of the tens. For example, 167 is mia moja sitini na saba. Mia moja sitini na saba. The next time you have trouble sleeping, try counting sheep in Swahili and see how far you can get. Would you like to go on a shopping trip in Kenya? In the next lesson, we'll get to practice the numbers by talking about prizes. I'll be waiting for you in the next Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu lesson. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody. I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, Unaweza ongea kingereza? Do you speak English? We also mentioned the word Samahani, which means excuse me in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use Samahani and other words when apologizing in Swahili. We should use Samahani in formal situations such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, Samahani, naweza giza kikombe cha kahawa? Excuse me, would I order a cup of coffee? We can also use it when asking a question. For example, Samahani, Mombasa iko wapi? Excuse me, where is Mombasa? Sometimes, we also hear people say just Samahani because it can also be used to draw someone's attention. Samahani. Samahani can be used in formal and informal situations. We can use Samahani when asking a question or when apologizing. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I am sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is niwi eradi. It means pardon me and can be used in both formal and informal situations. Niwi eradi. First, we have the Swahili word niwie, which means a consideration. Then, radhi, meaning pardon. Together, it literally means consider a pardon. But you can think of it like, pardon me. Niwie radhi. Niwie radhi. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Please, remember when you're in Kenya, if you accidentally bump into someone, it's more common to say samahani than niwie radhi. Are you able to count in Swahili? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Swahili from 1 to 10. I'll be waiting for you in our next Swahili Kwa Dakika Tatu lesson. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Swahili. Can you remember the numbers from moja to mia moja? I hope so, because this time, you will put them into use. We will be practicing how to go shopping in Kenya. Before we start, you need to know how to say, how much is this? He ni pesangapi. He ni pesangapi. Okay, 
Are you ready? Let's go. Imagine you're in a shop in Kenya. You find something you want to buy and you want to ask how much it costs. Start by saying, Samahani. Do you remember what this means? Excuse me. Samahani, hii ni pesa ngapi? Samahani, hii ni pesa ngapi? The clerk will tell you, ni shilingi? It costs. Or more simply, they'll say the amount directly. For example, ishirini na tano. What number is ishirini na tano? Can you work it out? It's 25. So this phrase means it cost 25 shillings. Let's look at some more examples. Say, you see a bag that you want to buy. A bag in Swahili is beggy. So how would you ask how much it costs? Samahani, begi hii ni pesa ngapi? Or a pair of shoes. This makes it slightly different because you have to use the plural form. A shoe will be kiatu, but the plural for shoes is viatu. So you would ask the following question. Samahani, viatu hivi ni pesa ngapi? This simply means, how much are these shoes? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Credit and debit cards are not commonly used in Kenya, but you can double check by asking the following question. Now, is a lipa kwa kadi credit? Can I pay by credit card? Now, where's a lipa kwa kadi credit? Do you feel confident about counting shillings? If you don't, don't worry. We'll learn all about it next time. I'll be waiting for you in the next Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu lesson. Tuonane! Hi everyone! Do you know how to say I love you in Swahili? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Nakupenda. 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 Or if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say Nimekupenda. 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 And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say Maneno hayawezi kueleza upendo wangu kwako. Maneno hayawezi kueleza upendo wangu kwako. Maneno hayawezi kueleza upendo wangu kwako. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Swahili. And if you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free Romance and Love Cheat Sheet which includes romantic words, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to swahilipod101.com now. See you next time. Welcome to swahilipod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu, the fastest easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Shukran kwa kungana na mimi katika kipindi hii. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Thank you for joining me. In this series, you're going to learn basic Swahili expressions. It's super easy, and it only takes three minutes. And in this first lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swahili you learn both an informal and formal way to do it. But unlike many other languages, there is not a very big difference between informal and formal speech in Swahili. First, let's see how Kenyan people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Ninafuraha kukutana na wewe. Hi, I'm Medina. Nice to meet you. Habari. Mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Let's break it down. 
start with a greeting. Habari, then Mimini, which is followed by your name. Next, say the phrase, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. All together, it is, Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And now, let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hello, my name is Medina Maraka. Nice to meet you. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at this together. It's important to note that habari can be used in both casual and formal settings. However, it is more formal and respectful to use the word shikamo, especially when addressing an older person. Shikamo implies good day or simply hello. You will notice that the section mimi ni for I am changes to jinalangu ni Medina for my name is Medina. During a formal self-introduction, it is advisable to mention your last name. So, I will say, my name is Medina Maraka. Here, you will say your full name. Finally, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe is the same for both. This phrase means, nice to meet you. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Swahili is, habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And the formal way to introduce yourself is Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When introducing yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Usually, the right hand is slightly supported by the left hand. If you're concerned about politeness, a slight bend forward while shaking the hand adds a sign of respect in the Kenyan business world. However, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Kenya, simplicity is best. Do you know how to say thank you in Swahili? You'll learn how to say this and many other words in the next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Thanks for dropping by and see you next time. Kwa heri, tuonane tena! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying Asante. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Kenya. Ukotayari, are you ready? Tuanze, so let's get started. The most commonly used informal greeting is habari. Habari. Habari means hi or hello. We use it when we meet people. We can use this greeting with friends or relatives, but also with people we don't know. We used this phrase in lesson one. Do you remember? And do you remember what the formal way of greeting people is? Shikamo. Shikamo. Do you also remember that habari can be used both in formal and casual settings? During the evening, we say habari ya jioni. Habari ya jioni. Jioni is Swahili for evening. So, habari ya jioni means good evening. Habari and habari ya jioni are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these greetings again. Instead, when living in both formal and informal situations, Kenyan people say kwaheri. Kwaheri. Kwaheri means goodbye. Finally, in Swahili, we have an expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. Tuonane tena. Tuonane tena. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Swahili. Let's review them all again. 
When greeting someone in an informal way, remember to say habari. When greeting someone in a formal situation, you say shikamo. When leaving in either a formal or informal situation, say tuonane tena. It's easy, isn't it? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. In formal situations, Kenyans commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug each other. Don't be afraid to do it with your Kenyan friends. It's normal. In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase, Unongea kingereza. Do you already know it? I'll be waiting with the answer in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Until then, tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Swahili. Do you remember habari as an informal way of greeting someone? And shikamo, the formal version? In this lesson, you're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Swahili, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Unaongea kingereza? Unaongea kingereza? In Swahili, we sometimes use a one-word phrase that combines the subject and its verb. Unongea is a good example. Breaking this phrase down further, we have u, which is a pronoun for the subject. Na shows the subject's potential of doing an action. It makes the statement affirmative. Ongea is the verb for speak. Together, we have unongea, which literally means you speak. Saying it with a higher intonation makes it a question. So, Unongea means, do you speak? Adding kingereza, the word for English, will make it unongea kingereza. This means, do you speak English? All together we have unongea kingereza. Unongea kingereza. To learn how to properly construct one word sentences, check out our obsolete beginner series at swahilipod101.com. There, you'll find several detailed grammar lessons. We are now going to make this sentence formal. It isn't hard. First, add the word J at the beginning of the sentence. J is a word that prompts a question. The sentence, unaongea, will change to J, unaweza ongea. Not the extra word weza, which means able. J, unaweza ongea, therefore means, are you able to? Let's look at the full sentence. J, unaweza ongea, kingereza. Do you speak English? J, unaweza ongea kingereza? Adding samahani, which means excuse me, makes the sentence even more polite. Samahani, unaweza ongea kingereza? The responses you'll receive could be one of these three. Ndiyo. Yes. Ndiyo. Kidogo. A little. Kidogo. La, siongei kingereza. No, I don't speak English. La, siongei kingereza. Since la siongei kingereza is a negative statement, we need to say la first, followed by si before the verb, and an e at the end of the verb. Also note that the verb ongei is slightly different from ongea. This is because negating in Swahili depends on the pronoun and the tense. In this example, the first person prefix C is used before the verb, and the suffix E is used at the end of the verb. As you can see, negation in Swahili follows a particular pattern. Some negations, though, require the word no, but we will talk about this in a later lesson. Now it's time for Medina's insights. For those of you who speak languages other than English, this question still works. Just substitute Kingereza with a different language. Here are some examples. Kitalia is Italian. Kirusi is Russian. Hispania 
is Spanish and Kijerumani is German. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression Samahani, but did you know that this can also be used as an apology? We'll be learning this in the next lesson, as well as other ways to apologize in Swahili. It's never too late to show your good manners to Kenyans. So, I'll see you in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. See you next time. Kwa heri, tonani tena. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. This lesson will be all about Nambari. That's right, that means numbers. First, we'll learn the numbers from 1 to 10. They're not difficult at all. And this lesson will only take 3 minutes. Kwa dakika tatu, 2. Are you ready? Let's start. Moja. Moja. Mbili. Mbili. Tatu. Tatu. Nne. Nne. Tano. Tano. Sita. Sita. Saba. Saba. Nane. Nane. Tisa. Tisa. Kumi. Kumi. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Moja. Mbili. Tatu. Nne. Tano. Sita. Saba. Nane. Tisa. Kumi. Great job! If you're wondering what comes before moja, namely zero, it is sufuri in Swahili. Sufuri. It's quite easy to remember, right? Now, there's no need to panic if your new Kenyan friend asks for your cell phone number. Let's practice how you'll say it. We'll use the phrase, Nambari yangu ni, which means, my number is. Nambari yangu ni. Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, sita, tano. Can you read it by yourself? Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, sita, tano. Perfect. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Kenyans consistently pronounce these numbers as they appear, so it's easy to master them. These numbers are used to name other bigger numbers, so this saves you the energy of having to start over again. Keep at it, because the advantages of mastering these first 10 numbers will become clear as we continue our lessons. Do you know the Swahili word for 100? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers 11 to 100 in Swahili. Before jumping in, be sure to practice the numbers we learned in this lesson, from moja to kumi. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners when we thank people. Are you ready? Let's get started. 
There are several ways to thank someone, but let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Asante. Asante. As you may have guessed, asante means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add the word sana. Asante sana. Asante sana. Sana means a lot. So, asante sana is just like saying thank you very much. In the last lesson, we talked about the informal and formal ways of speaking Swahili. But asante will work in both situations. So there's no need to worry. So how do you reply to thank you in Swahili? It's easy. There are two ways of doing it. The main way is to say, karibu. This means, you're welcome. Karibu. Literally, this phrase means, welcome. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression, kamwe. Kamwe. Literally, this phrase means, not at all or never mind. You use this when you think that there's no need to be thanked. So it's like saying, don't mention it. So when someone says asante to you, you can simply reply with karibu or kamwe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use asante or asante sana, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Asante can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. Do you know what habari means? In our next Kiswahili kwa dakika lesson, you learn this and other greetings in Swahili. Tuonane! Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.